we uh, um, we have to make sure that each session on Zoom are 40 minutes first of all, because there is no way I can do any more. That is the limitation. Each meeting must be 40 minutes, and uh, seems like uh, uh, the big blue button didn't work for us. I'm having trouble there. There's a huge lag, as you can see, and it doesn't connect. Is it the same with everyone? Did you also have trouble? Yeah, very good. Now I'm gonna uh, do the lecture here uh, as much as I can. Uh, uh, first of all, before I start explaining the concept of selection and show you how you can work around, do you have any questions? Yes, is there any question? No, everything is clear. Okay, very good. I'm gonna upload new videos today, just so you know, I will upload new ones. Uh, and with those videos, you'll be able to see the if else uh, structure. Uh, so make sure to uh, follow the videos, okay? This is why I think it's very good that we have uh, offline videos. Uh, so you can basically connect to YouTube and follow it there. As for the ones who are not hearing me, I think you should uh, disconnect and connect again. Close the app, reconnect again. It should work. So just before I start, once again, to show you, uh, can you all hear and see my screen at the same time? If you can, please say okay on the public chat. Just three people. Like if you are suffering, you need to uh, close and reconnect. I think the problem is on your side because this is not an application authorized by university. It's an international application, even used by big companies and organizations. I'm absolutely sure it works. So it is on your side. So please disconnect and be connect again. I think if you are in the campus, uh, your connection might be uh, dodgy. It might be that it, it doesn't allow you to connect or something. So uh, just close the application and restart. It should work because I see other people are being connected and they can see me. So I need to take up the lecture because we already spent almost half an hour for connection issues. I don't want to spend too much time on it anymore, okay? So I need to continue the lecture. So you said that everything is clear, so I assume you don't have any questions. This week we are covering the concept of selection. As I told you, I already uh, prepared the video and I'm gonna upload it. Uh, by way of selection, what we're gonna do in here is that I'm gonna show you how you can do a selection in uh, C++ programming. Basically, a selection is where you come to a decision in the program and your decision branches to uh, what we call as a balloon outcome, which is a true or a false condition. So in this scenario, you evaluate a condition, a logical expression will be evaluated in a selection structure. A logical expression will be evaluated.
and the outcome is always either true or false. That is the core idea behind uh, selection. So how do we do this? You come to a point in the program where you need to go through different pathways and each pathway is regarded as a selection. So you evaluate a series of pathways are evaluated and based on the outcome, which in this case is true or false, program goes to program branches to different directions, directions. So a good example to this is when you want to uh, ask someone to enter, for example, their grade or their age to evaluate a certain condition. So let's do this uh, with an example. So I'm gonna create an example here. Write a complete C slash C++. This means that the code that I'm going to write will be C++, but the style that I use is C program to ask the user their age and show you are an adult if the age is 18 or above and similarly show not an adult yet if the age is 18. lower than 18. Okay. So let's do this together. I'm going to go down. And write the program itself. First thing first, I'm going to write the uh, standard statements. include IOS stream and you don't have to type the namespace but it's a good idea to write it because you don't have to repeat std statement at the beginning of c out and c in and we write the main function I'm gonna put some up there and return zero. Now C in and C in ignore are optional steps. So I'm gonna write the program here, C out and backslash N, please enter your age. Now that we entered it, we're gonna define the value, integer h. Do we have any questions up to here? I think it's everything is very clear up to here, right? Can you follow? Hello, anyone? Can you please respond when I ask you a question? Thank you. Otherwise, I will never know if you are following or not. Please respond to me on the chat. Thank you very much. We're going to take up C in H. And now that we have this, we're going to evaluate the condition. If you want to evaluate a condition, you put an if statement. 
And once, once you have typed this, you're gonna evaluate the condition itself. If the age is, for example, greater than or equals to 18, we're gonna put an actual statement here, which in this case, in the question, if it said the age is 18 or above, just say you are an adult. We're gonna come there and show it. So copy pasting this part. Now with the difference in here in the if else part, you should know that if there is only one line underneath it, you don't have to actually uh, type the brackets in here. You can see that the brackets are optional, so you can ignore them. You can ignore these brackets if the statement under if is only one line like that if there is more than one line then you have to put the brackets they are not optional anymore so it all depends on how many lines you need to put or you gotta put under the if condition okay if it is only one line you don't have to put the brackets these ones if it is more than one line then it is a must now that the, uh, we have this, we can evaluate the else condition. Now else means if the if condition is not working, you automatically assume the else part. Another way of doing this is putting an else, in, which means that the first condition is not true and I'm gonna uh, evaluate on the next condition. So we're gonna put else if. In this case, else if is H in here, just copy pasting it, is greater than, less than, sorry, 18. So make sure that the, this condition is also evaluated. In the first one, we had age being greater than 18. In the second one, we look into less than 18. And we're gonna put C out, not an adult yet. You can also put N line here instead of uh, backslash n, it is possible an alternative approach. I will talk about this in the videos. Putting an end line and you can put it there, okay? With each one now, when the program runs, you can see the outcome. Let's try to run this thing. Uh, we can save it into the programs part, basic if else. And you can see the, please enter your age. Let's enter 25. And you can see the message down there. You are an adult. And if I run this program once again, entering an age less than 18, such as 14, it says not an adult yet. So it branches into a true or false statement. In the, in the first one, it says uh, greater than 18. And in the second one, it's less than 18. You can also put the beginning or the end as many uh, if as you like. You are not limited with only if else. You can put as many as you like. This is the part that students get confused. They only assume that there is if and there is else. No, you can put if as many else if as you like. And at the end, you can just put an else statement if you want to. This is a completely optional, okay? So this is the branching of uh, every single one of them. So the first one is always if, anything between if and else is an else if, and the very last statement is else. And it doesn't actually evaluate the condition. What it does is, is that it automatically assumes everything above that you evaluated is actually false. Okay?
so you're gonna go up there and add a statement just to uh, check up the condition. So I'm gonna put a condition here. If okay, can you repeat this please again because we we don't know where you enter for having a display for having your answer. Which part? Can you please ask again? Again. Yeah, I said uh, we. I want to know where you enter for having your your display, because in the first page we just tap a code, and uh, I want to know where I can find the display. The answer. I mean. What do you mean display? You mean the what I execute? Yes, 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 yes. The, to execute the program, you go execute, gentlemen, up there yes. in the menu, compile and run. This one. You can okay. also press F11. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to come here to create a condition for the H part where the H will be invalidated. So you can say that if the H is, uh, let's say, less than zero, if someone enters an H less than zero, and we can say an or if the H is over 120, which is an unusual H for people, for humans, then we can say something like, please enter a valid age. So it is possible to combine, as you can see, certain uh, categories and evaluate a condition. Okay, so it's like, it is very unusual for uh, human beings to be uh, over 120 years old, and also the age to be less than zero, because technically when you are born, you are, two months well you know you will uh, earn uh, you will age so it'll be one one years old two years old so forth so when you come here you can display a message to the user telling that please enter a valid age now that you do this part you can put the second part as else you see, if you want to add to the top, the first one always becomes if. The ones in between are always else if. And you can also put uh, else uh, wherever you like to put it. So at the end, so if, else if, else if. And if you put a, a, a last condition, that will be else. In here, we don't have a final condition, so I'm just gonna put else. Uh, just leave it at else, sorry. So to run this application now, I'm gonna go into execute compile run or you can press on F11 on your keyboard and enter an age. Assume that I entered 200 as the age. Now this time, as you can see, it will say, please enter a valid age. It didn't accept the age that I entered because of this statement. You can see that this statement here is not really accepting it because the age must be now greater than zero and less than 120. Otherwise, it will trigger you this error. So an if else part is not only used for evaluation, but also used for validation. Okay, this is very important. You don't also always evaluate, sometimes you validate. The difference is that the validation is done to make sure the data that you collect is in the right format, okay? So you can put an else statement here and even say that something went wrong. Rerun the program. This means that if the uh, program that you have written down is not matching with the data or something went wrong because the people uh, didn't type the data, you can even evaluate a certain condition should you want to. Right now, we are not gonna learn about this, so don't confuse yourself, but basically these three statements 
are enough for you because you are expected to enter uh, numbers. So if you enter something like minus eight here, it will still trigger this error message saying that you need to enter a valid information. And if you enter an actual information there, such as 20, it will show you the message that is supposed to show. So that is the core of if else. There are many examples in the slides which you can follow up. So uh, is this clear? Did you understand? Yeah, we did. Yes, everything is okay? Good. Now, before I continue further, do you have any questions about the previous part, the previous exercises that we covered or something that I did in the tutorials, but you did not understand? Not yet. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Yes, I have a question, please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my question is uh, when we saw the uh, the first part of C++, I think uh, the beginning, the beginning, I think there was a problem we could, we could not fix it. And if we can repeat again, please, sir. Where the beginning, what, what are you talking about? Which beginning part? I don't understand. Be more specific. Yeah, yeah you know, they include, you include ISO stream. Yeah, include ISO stream and how to proceed the, the count and chin. I mean, uh, C out and C in. Yes. What's about them? I don't understand. What is your question? My question is, I don't know how to use it, how to use it, but- Gentlemen, uh, do you watch the YouTube tutorials? First of all, yes, yes. do you yes, watch I them? I explain yes, those yes. in very much detail and I can see that majority of my tutorials are not quite much by you. There's something called YouTube analytics and I can actually see who watches my videos or not. Yes. I am sorry to tell you this, but I don't think you watch the videos because I explain there what C out and C in does. We have passed that stage a long time ago, okay? You need to know by now what C out and C in does because I did that two weeks ago. Now, if you come and ask me questions from two, three weeks ago, I will struggle a bit because this means I cannot do a new topic. When I tell you to ask me questions, I was talking about last week course, which we did the uh, arithmetics and sequences, not C out, C in, okay? But just to clarify with you, because I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to say don't ask me questions, just to clarify, C out is a statement that is means show something and C in means uh, get something. Out okay. means output, in means input. The default output device on your computer is the screen. So whenever you put this and put the tokens there, it will show you uh, the outcome, okay, on the screen. Okay, and whenever you put the input, the default input device is the keyboard. So this is, so when you put the C in, it expects you to enter something on the keyboard and store it into a variable, such as when I put the statement, it's clear, enter your age, it expects you to enter an age and store it into an age value, okay? Like in here. It's clear, sir. Okay. Now, as I told you at the beginning of this session, okay, every single one of my sessions must be 40 minutes. We are almost at the end of 40 minutes now. I can take one more question and uh, end up the session and open a new one. Do you have a, any other questions to ask before I end up this session and start to a new one? So before you end it, can I know the YouTube channel you said you upload in the YouTube? It's on the Moodle page, gentlemen. Moodle page. Everything okay, is on sir, the Moodle you. page. Go there uh, and read, please. If you go to the Moodle okay, page... Sir. 
Look, this course is supported with online YouTube tutorial, which you can access by simply clicking on link. I even wrote it bold and big. I don't know what else I could do for you. It says, please watch the videos every week. If you go there, you can watch the video. See? Currently, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven videos. I'm going to upload two more today so you can watch them. Okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Now I'm going to end up this session and open a new one for you and invite you there. Okay. Thank you, sir. I will send the invitation to you on the message board on a uh, Moodle guide. So go to the messages on the Moodle and I'm gonna send the invitation there, okay? All right. All right. See All right, you in a while. You, Bye. Excuse me, sir, is there any attendance for this session? No, I will not take the attendance. Uh, okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, sir. Thank <laughs> you.